So focus on your breath. When the breath is coming in, know it's coming in. When it goes out, know it's going out. That's all you have to pay attention to right now. There will be other things, thoughts coming through your mind, noises from outside. But you don't have to pay attention to those. Just because something comes into your mind doesn't mean that it's really yours or really your business. Right now you want to give the mind a chance to settle down. Just be right here in the present moment. It doesn't have to go wandering off anywhere else. Allow it to have a chance to just settle in. The mind is like water. If the water has been mixed up with dirt and you shake it around, it's the, all the water is going to be muddy. But you take muddy water and you let it sit for a while and it starts to get clear. The dirt settles down to the bottom and you've got clear water. That's the same with the mind. If the mind has a chance to sit still for a while, all the things that make it murky begin to settle out, and it develops a clearness, a clarity. That's all you have to pay attention to. You don't even have to listen to the Dharma talk. The Dharma talk is here as a fence. If your attention goes wandering off, you run into the fence, so you have to turn around and go back to the breath. Tonight's a special occasion. In Thai it's called Maka Bucha. It commemorates a day in the Buddha's career when 1,250 of his Arahant disciples, all of their own accord, came to see him one afternoon. And tradition has it that this was less than a year after his awakening. And so he gave them all a Dharma talk called the Owada Bhati Moka. The chant we did just now was a summary of the main points in the talk. And then after that he sent them off to teach. He said, don't, don't any two of you go in the same road. Go off and teach the Dharma for the, for the good, for the welfare of the many people. And so that talk he gave that day is considered to be a, an important summary of his basic teachings. And one of the most important points in that summary is the point of making the mind clear, making the mind pure. That's part of a three lines in the verse. Not doing the not doing of any evil, the development of all that's skillful, and making the mind pure. These are the Buddha's teachings. You can take everything the Buddha taught and bring it under those three headings. And what we're doing right now is working on making the mind pure. How is the mind impure? All sorts of conflicting intentions come up in the mind. Pull us this way, pull us that way. And we begin to lose direction in our lives. Because not only do our own minds have lots of different directions, you look around, you're outside. This sign tells you to buy that. This sign tells you to look for happiness here with this thing or that relationship. Books tell you about different ways to improve yourself. And there's just too much. It gets the mind all stirred up. And when it's stirred up, all kinds of things. The mind gets muddy, just like water that's been stirred up. We lose sense of our direction, even of what we really want in life. So what we need is to find a place where we can be quiet, have as few outside influences as possible, and give the mind a chance to look at itself, to get a sense of what really would be for its own true well-being, for its own true happiness. So that's why we come out to a place like this, and we're literally at the end of the road. Even though there are other people here, they're here to look at their minds, too. So it's not much of a disturbance. Look at what you've got when you're sitting right here. You've got the mind thinking and aware. You've got the body sitting here breathing. So you put those things together and let them stay together for a while so you can see even more clearly what you've got right here. 
If the breath doesn't feel comfortable, you can change it so that it does. You can try long breathing, short breathing, deep breathing, shallow breathing, heavy, light, narrow, broad. You can think of the whole body breathing in, breathing out. If you have trouble staying with the breath, you can use a meditation word to go along with it. A traditional one is butto, which means awake. But with the in-breath, to with the out. And be patient. That's one of the first words in the summary of the Buddhist teachings on that night, or that afternoon, excuse me. Patient endurance is the foremost austerity. Austerity here being any energy that you use to purify the mind. And patience is an important one. If you're impatient, you stay with the breath for a little bit and you say, there's not much here, let's go someplace else. And as a result, you don't get to see the subtle things that are right here. So when the breath comes in, stay with it. The next breath comes in, you stay with that one too. Just keep at it. And even though the results may, don't, not, may not seem to come quickly, they will come if you're patient enough. It's like growing any plant. You put the, the seed in the ground. You come back a day later, you don't see anything. You say, well, that seed must be dead, and so you stop watering it. Well, the seed's potential never gets a chance to grow. You keep watering, keep looking after it. It takes time to, to judge whether a seed is a live seed that will give you a plant or a dead seed that won't give you anything at all. So you have to be patient. Stick with the breath coming in, stick with the breath going out. Other things come in, like people inviting you to go off someplace. Say, let's go over here, let's go over there. You say, nope, I'm working on something right here, right now. I've got this seed here, I want to see if it grows. And what nourishes the seed is mindfulness, keeping the breath in mind, not letting yourself forget. And then there's alertness, trying to be as sensitive as possible to how the breath feels. The more you can get into the breath, the easier it is to stay here. So don't just stay on the surface of the breath. Immerse yourself totally in the process of breathing. Well, you're here in the body and the breath is here in the body. Let the breath bathe you, coming in, going out. And that seed, which is your intention to let the mind be still, to let the mind see itself for itself, that will have a chance to grow. And as you stay here, you get a stronger and stronger sense that this is what true happiness is, true well-being, is just being able to stay right here in the present moment. Most people can't stay with the present moment. They sit there in a doctor's office, say, for 15 minutes and they get bored, they get antsy. And so they've crammed their time full with, with garbage, with magazines on the doctor's table. And as a result, they don't get to see anything. They just simply take in more outside stimuli, more of other people's opinions about what they might be interested in or what they should be interested in. And the mind never gets a chance to see itself for itself. But if you can provide the place, the mind with a good place to settle down right here, right now, the mind has a chance to blossom. This seed inside, this intention to find true happiness right here in the present moment, it begins to grow. And you realize it doesn't require all that much. If you pay attention to the breath, it's the stillness of the mind that provides real happiness. The Buddha once said, there is no, other, there is no happiness other than peace, other than stillness. And the only way we can know whether that's true or not is to allow the mind to be still. Give it a place where it can stay, with a sense of ease, a sense of well-being and just see how great that sense of well-being can become as you stay with it. To see what extent the mind can begin to grow bright, grow clear, grow pure here in the present moment, simply by allowing it to be still. So take this opportunity. It doesn't come every day for everyone in the world. A whole hour where all you have to do is breathe. And all that's asked of you is that you try to be as sensitive as possible to the breath. There's mindfulness, alertness, and on top of that there's simply 
a cons consistent effort to stay with the breath, stay with the breath. Learn how to exert that effort in a way that's relaxed, that's not tense. If there's a lot of tension, just sim simply sitting here breathing, you can get tense about that. There's no way the mind is going to want to settle down. If you breathe in, breathe out with a sense of ease. Allow the mind to stay with the breath. That seed of your intention, which is to get, the, get to know your own mind, will begin to blossom. You really see what your awareness in the present moment is like. Awareness is not cluttered up with a lot of other thoughts, other agendas. That's not being hoodwinked into thinking about the past, thinking about the future. Because what are those thoughts? They're all fabrications in the mind. As you get to know your present awareness more and more clearly, you begin to see how artificial that process is, creating the past, creating the future. It has its uses, but you don't want it to take over the mind. So allow the mind to settle down here, and as it settles down, all that murkiness that comes from having all conflicting intentions, conflicting ideas. You don't have to sort out the ideas, decide who's right, who's wrong. Just allow them all to fall still for the time being and see what's left when everybody has a chance to settle down here, in, here inside the mind, here inside the body. What kind of clarity, what kind of purity comes from a still mind? What sense of well-being comes from a still mind? You can't know unless you give it a chance. So if you find yourself wandering off the breath, come back. You can think about other things for the whole rest of your life. Right now is a chance to be right here. There are no other responsibilities, nowhere else you go, nothing else you have to do. Just be with the awareness of the breath in the present moment. If you slip off, don't berate yourself, don't browbeat yourself. Just very gently, very firmly bring yourself back. Keep coming back to the breath. Until it becomes familiar territory, then the mind can settle down. And only when the mind can settle down can you really see for yourself what true well-being is, what is and is not needed for the mind to have a sense of well-being. Once you gain more, a stronger and stronger inner sense of well-being like this, then the various directions that the world outside wants to pull you to buy this, to do that, whatever. you got a greater sense of where you want to go, where you don't want to go. And it's not based on unexamined ideas. When you sit here and get the mind really still, you can examine every idea that comes up to see how valid it is, to see whether you really believe those things that have been running the show in your mind for so long. But to get that perspective requires stillness, a mind that's solid in the present moment. So that's what we're working on right here, right now.